One of the most desired skills as a 2D motion designer is to be able to animate illustrations and vector objects. If you have a job lineup that requires full vector animation or you're looking to get into this type of motion graphics, you're gonna be a pro after watching this video. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel, Sunduck Film. Please be sure to drop a like on this video for the YouTube algorithm and drop a comment below on how many videos you've seen me wear a black shirt in. Anyway, let's jump in the video and let's create some awesome vector motion graphics. So as always, I should mention that you can download these project files for free if you wish to follow along. So the first part of the tutorial, I have to talk about the two ways that you'll acquire vector elements for your project. So one of the ways that you may acquire these type of graphics is if you're working with a designer and they design all these graphics and they send it to you. Uh, the other way to get these type of elements is to go to a website like this. I'll link it in the description below and you can type in whatever you're looking for. Uh, and you can download these assets for free, but there's also paid assets out there that might work for your projects. So you can pretty much find whatever you need uh, for your project out there on the internet in the form of illustrations and vector objects. Um, and the third way is you would need to learn how to create these things from scratch, which I don't teach that because this is not my skill set. but I know how to work with these objects, you know, get them from Adobe Illustrator into After Effects and animate those graphics. So when you receive files like this, either you download it from a website or a designer gives it to you, usually you'll get one of two files, an Illustrator file, which is .ai, or an EPS file, which is .eps, right? Uh, so if you receive one of these files, always open the Illustrator file first. Um, and if you don't get the Illustrator file, you'll probably get an EPS file and you'll open that one up instead. So if you receive the Illustrator file, go ahead and open that. And when you open that, this will automatically open up Adobe Illustrator, and then you'll see the original design and the layout of everything that you have. So the first thing you'll do here in Illustrator is you're gonna need to separate everything so you can get it ready for animation inside of After Effects. So what you'll do is you'll come over here to Layers. If you don't see the Layers tab here, you go to Window Layers. And over here, you'll see all the layers just like you would in After Effects. We just wanna make this import friendly so we can animate these individual objects inside of After Effects. So how do we do that? So first what we wanna do is kinda of take a look at where everything's at. So if I click an object here, we'll see that everything here gets selected. You'll see this blue tab here indicates that everything inside the objects layer is selected. So if I come here and move it around, it moves everything except for the background layer. So what we'll do is open the objects layer and keep going down the hierarchy until we see the bulk of every object. So we can see here that each of these objects are in its own group. So if I come here and I hide one of these cogs, which is this red one right here, if I hide it, you'll see that it will be hidden. So you, we know that that's in its own group. However, it's not in its own layer, which is what we need for After Effects animation. So you see here in After Effects, the cog is gonna be in its own layer because I can easily hide it and that's what we have to set this up for. So first what we wanna do is go through this and remove elements that we don't want. So for example, if we come here and hold down control on our keyboard and click an element we don't want, like the title, it'll automatically only select that group and I can just delete it. And then I can go through some of these and start removing elements we don't want if you download this off the internet opposed to say having a designer. I'm also gonna remove glows and reflections and things like that so it make the import a lot easier uh, to work with. So to quickly layer everything, all we need to do is click on the group on top of the hierarchy so this has all the groups within it. We'll come here to the three line icon and what we'll do is click on release to layers sequence. So now each group has been converted into a layer and all we need to do is select everything and bring it above you know, everything here in the hierarchy. So now all these layers are isolated and on their own. And then you can delete the empty layer, in my case, the objects layer uh, from your layers board here. Uh, and this way we have everything isolated. And now we can bring this over to After Effects by going to File, Save As, and you can name your file as an Illustrator file and click on Save. All right, so now we have to import our illustration work into After Effects. So what we do is we take that AI file that we saved and we throw it into our After Effects project panel. And it'll ask you how to import it. Click Composition and click OK. So then you'll get this composition right here in your project panel. You can double click it. And then that's the work that you had in Adobe Illustrator. So what we can do to make this for a video format is go to Composition, Composition Settings, uh, and we'll set the width and height to 1920 by 1080 or whatever resolution that you need. Uh, and that should be good, click OK. So then all we need to do here is scale everything up. So we can grab all of our layers and we hit S on our keyboard for scale and we'll just scale this up proportionally. And you know, that seems about right. So one thing that happens when you scale up layers in any software is that it starts to pixelate and you lose 
quality. But with vector files, all you have to do is click on this icon right here on all the layers and this will continuously rasterize them so you don't lose any quality as you scale up you know, to whatever size that you need it to be. And that's the beauty of working with vector objects. Creating motion graphics from scratch can be time consuming like any After Effects project. To help you save time and produce amazing work within minutes, we produced the Motion Graphics Advanced Pack, which contains over 750 templates for After Effects and Premiere Pro. You can preview every template before applying and then add it to your project with one click of a button. Then you can quickly change the graphics and the colors with the pre-made customization settings. And then you have a full graphic complete in under a minute instead of an hour. To see this pack in all 8,000 plus of our library of growing templates, be sure to check our links in the description below. And as a quick tip, since these are Illustrator files, if you need to change colors or any of the design elements here, what you can do is select that object and we can change the color right here in Adobe Illustrator and we can save this and then go back to After Effects and it should automatically update here in After Effects. So before we do any animation, your first job is to adjust the anchor points of each layer. So this is the mouse layer here selected. And if I rotate this right now, you know, it's gonna revolve around this center anchor point. And every layer has that anchor point in the center uh, just because we moved it over from Illustrator. So to fix this, what we can do is grab the pan behind tool with the layer selected and grab that anchor point and move it onto the object. So now if I decide to rotate this layer, it's gonna rotate around that anchor point, which is on its actual layer. So that's what you need to do is go through each layer here, figure out what is what, and then move the anchor points uh, to where you want the animation to happen. So we're gonna talk about two types of animations for each of these objects. So the first animation we'll talk about is the in animation. And then after that, we'll talk about the repeatable animation that will go on forever. So it's all up to you how these objects will reveal on. So for this mouse layer, I can just hit P on my keyboard for position and add a keyframe for this and move that keyframe forward to one second. I wanna move every keyframe to a second and then adjust it from there. So then we'll go back to frame zero, grab the X position and we can have this slide in. So if we make the last keyframe an easy ease by hitting F9 on our keyboard, you can also go to the graph editor and decide to bring those handles in to have more of a snapping animation like that. And you know, that looks good. So another thing we can do here for animation is to continue on the animation after it's been animated on so we can have some movement in our scene. One thing we could do here is go to effect, distort and grab transform because I still want this to be positioning, but I wanna have these two parameters isolated. So for example, what I want to do here uh, is after this has been revealed on, add a keyframe for position on the transform effect, move forward in time by a little bit, and then grab the exposition to have it go over. Then what I can do is hit U on my keyboard to bring up the keyframes, alt click the stopwatch, and we'll type in the expression loop out with a capital O, open parenthesis, quotations, ping pong uh, quotations, and close parenthesis. So now our mouse will animate in and then we'll have this looping animation that will continue on forever. All right, so pretty much all the animation principles from here are very similar. We're gonna do the in animation and also the looping animation, uh, but I wanna go through different ideas so you can apply this to your own work and see different techniques. Uh, one thing I would do if you were gonna go ahead and close off this video, just make sure motion blur is turned on for all your layers uh, so you'll have that nice motion blur with your animation. But for those of you that wanna pick up some more techniques and get some ideas, well, this tutorial it will continue on for you. So right now I have the pen layer selected and we can see that the anchor point is right here. I want the anchor point to be right on the tip of the pen because that's where I want the rotation action to happen. So we'll go ahead and adjust that rotation. Um, and what we can do is open up our layer. You'll see all the transform properties and we'll add a keyframe for position. We'll go back to zero seconds and just move this off screen. So now we'll just have this animation comes in but I wanna add some rotation action to this. So what I'm gonna do is alt click the stopwatch for rotation uh, and type in wiggle, open parenthesis two comma, you know, 40, maybe that's okay. So now the pen will come in and it'll be rotating around that anchor point. So here I have the light bulb layer selected and I wanna do like an overshoot animation. So let me show you what that is. I'll hit S on my keyboard for scale and the anchor point here on this layer is at the bottom. So when I add a keyframe for this and I move it forward and I set the scale down to 0%, the light bulb is gonna kind of grow from the bottom, but I want this to be an overshoot. What I can do to make this overshoot animation is I can go to that last keyframe and then move back by just a few frames and just scale this to be larger 
uh, than the final keyframe value. So what will happen is that this will grow and it will create an overshoot animation. And feel free to adjust keyframes as you see fit to make the animations more meaningful. Another technique here is when you're working with lighting type objects, you know, it might be wise to add a lighting based effect. So maybe brightness and contrast or uh, a glow effect might work. So for example, I'll come here to brightness, all click stopwatch and type in wiggle, open parenthesis two comma 50, something around there. So this way I'll create somewhat of like a light bulb flicker effect. So in this next technique, I wanna talk about using the actual transform effect along with your basic transform properties. So here I have this color palette swab or whatever you wanna call it here selected. And I'm gonna hit R my keyboard for rotation. I'll just rotate this in. So this will simply be re revealed in behind the computer, but also I need to hit shift S on my keyboard for scale, add a keyframe for it, and then move that forward in time and then set the scale down to 0%. This way I can hide the object behind the computer. But I also want this to be rotating, but we've already used the rotation keyframe here. So what we can do to fix this, let's go to effect, distort, and grab transform. One thing we need to do is with the transform effect, we have our two anchor point values here. I want to grab the first anchor point and make sure it's right on the original anchor point and go back to position, grab that anchor point and put it there as well. This way, this effect will work on the original anchor point that you created. It might be a little bit confusing, so just go back and rewatch what I did. So what we can do is now use the rotation value here by holding alter and keyboard and we can do the wiggle effect here, maybe like a 0.5 comma, you know, 40 or something. So now we'll have our in rotation and then our continual rotation. So this is the last object I will animate for this tutorial. Then I invite you to download the project files to break down what I did or just get creative with your own work. So I'm gonna grab one of these cogs here and I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard for scale and we'll scale this one in very simply. So grab that keyframe, move it forward and set the scale down to 0%. Um, and we'll hit F9 to make these easy ease, which you should be doing. And maybe go in the graph editor to punch up these animations because this will make a difference in your work. And then we hit R on our keyboard for rotation, all click stopwatch. And this time around we'll do time asterisk, you know, negative 30 or 30, whatever. And this will also continue the rotation of an object, you know, forever. So we have that animation like that and that looks great. So I could talk about creating different types of animations all day, uh, but I invite you to go ahead and create your own work or download project files to break this down. As you can see, we have pretty much all the similar types of animations in this completed pieces of work where we're using positions and scales and using those expressions to continue on the animations for each of these objects. So, you know, it's up to you what you want to do. Obviously your projects are going to vary. I just wanted to give a handful of tips uh, to give you some ideas for whatever project that you're working on. So if you're just getting started in the world of motion graphics, we have our free After Effects and Premiere Pro motion graphic template packs. Those links are below. You get a motion duck extension along with, I think, 150 templates for all three packs. Uh, you can also get more After Effects content on our Instagram. That link is in the description below. You know, be sure to hit that subscribe button and always be creative.